Swimming pools provide endless hours of fun, but they also must have safety equipment in the pool area to protect health. For starters, all pools must have at least one spine board, and if there are lifeguards on duty, the boards must have straps and a head immobilizer. A reach pole with shepherd's crook is also required. The reach pole must be at least 12 feet long and non-telescopic, and the shepherd's crook must be attached to it at all times. Additionally, pools are required to have a U.S. Coast Guard approved Type 4 personal flotation device with an attached line or rope that is at least 1 4th inch in diameter and 30 to 60 feet long. Finally, a pool must have an easily accessible first aid kit with new disposable gloves and materials to stop bleeding and clean minor cuts and scrapes. If the first aid kit is not visible from the pool, a sign must be posted with its location and the kit must be accessible to patrons during all open pool hours. Multiple pools may share one set of safety equipment if they are within the same shared fence. Spas, wading pools, and spray grounds, however, are only required to provide an easily accessible first aid kit and emergency phone. Because emergencies can occur at any time, a designated emergency phone must be provided during all open hours at a pool or spa. The phone must be easily accessible, in proper working condition, within 500 feet of each public pool or spa, and under the control of the operator. Emergency numbers and directions also must be posted next to the phone, and if the emergency phone is not visible from the pool deck, a sign must be posted stating its location. Lifeguards are required at all pools with diving boards, recreational slides, a surface area of 2,000 square feet or more, a surface area of less than 2,000 square feet with more than 50 people in the pool, a zero depth entry more than 18 inches deep, and a unique design feature as specified by the Ohio Administrative Code. The size and number of bathers for a public pool will also determine how many lifeguards are required. Reference a lifeguard chart to determine the requirements for your specific pool. Additionally, pools measuring 6,000 square feet or more must have a written lifeguard management plan. Keep in mind that lifeguards must be a capable swimmer, certified in CPR and first aid, and hold a current valid lifeguard certification. The pool operator must have copies of all lifeguard certifications on file and available at the facility. When lifeguards are on duty, they must be prepared to enter the water at any time. They cannot perform any additional tasks such as coaching or swimming instruction while on duty. Lifeguards also must have a rescue tube and CPR pocket mask on them, and all on-duty lifeguards must be dressed alike and easily identifiable. Another important safety feature for pool patrons and the general public is fencing. Currently, all fences must be 48 inches high from the ground with openings no larger than 4 inches. Wading pools also must have a fence at least 36 inches high. Gates and doors must be self-closing, self-latching, and lockable, and the latch must be 38 inches from the ground. All barriers must be locked whenever the pool is closed. Additionally, safety or float lines that alert patrons to the increasing water depth must be anchored to the interior of the pool wall. Safety lines are required if the bottom slope of the pool changes, and they should be anchored one foot towards the shallow side of the slope change. Safety lines, however, are not required in pools that are five feet or less in depth and have no break in slope. Pool decks can also post a safety hazard. To protect patrons, the deck must be free from any slip and trip hazards and built with impervious, easily cleanable, and non-abrasive but slip-resistant surface. Carpet and wood are not acceptable materials. There also should be no standing water on the deck but water collected and drained from surfaces must not drain to the pool or recirculation system. It also is important to maintain items such as furniture, planners, and equipment at a reasonable distance from the edge of the pool. Additionally, facilities with recreational diving equipment must have a specified lifeguard to observe the diving area. Except for competitions, training, and events, Recreational diving equipment must have either a fixed or adjustable fulcrum locked in the forward most position at all times. 
Starting blocks and diving platforms also cannot be accessible or used unless a coach or instructor is physically present and available to observe their use. Recreational and water slides are required to have posted signs that include these warnings and requirements. Always check to see if the landing area is clear before entering the slide. Users shall follow directions from the dispatcher. Users must exit the landing area of the slide immediately. Users shall ride feet first at all times. Stopping or changing position is prohibited. And life jackets or other flotation devices are prohibited other than those designed for the slide and used as directed by the manufacturer. Signs also must include a minimum user height and any other requirements recommended by the manufacturer. Additionally, water slide signs must state only one user at a time is permitted and forming chains is prohibited. Signs for recreational slides must say that only one user shall be on the platform at any time. Slides also have specific lifeguard requirements. If the slide is more than 10 feet above the deck level, a lifeguard is required to be stationed with a clear view and rapid access to the landing area when the slide is in use. Slides that are 25 feet tall or more must also have a dispatcher located on the platform who maintains visual and verbal contact with the lifeguard supervising the landing area. Public pools and spas are also required to post safety signs. We have already covered the emergency phone, but again, all pools must have a sign with the location of the nearest telephone if the phone cannot be seen from the pool or spa. The name and phone number of the nearest available police station, fire station, and rescue unit also must be posted by the emergency phone. Similarly, all pools are required to post depth markings as well as no diving signs, with the exception of wading pools, public spas, or in pool areas with depths of more than 5 feet. These depth markers and no diving signs must be next to one another, no more than 25 feet apart, and within 2 feet of the water's edge, or 6 inches from the gutter. The letters for both must be at least 4 inches high and in contrast to the background. A no diving graphic may also be used in place of the words no diving. Pools that are not required by law to have a lifeguard must post three additional warning signs that state, warning, no lifeguard on duty, swimming alone is not recommended, and children must be supervised. And if any time the pool or spa is closed, a sign stating danger or warning, pool, spa, closed, must be posted. It's important to remember that pool chemicals also can be hazardous if used or stored improperly. Pool chemicals should be stored in sealed containers off the floor in a cool and dry area that is inaccessible to patrons. Many chemicals are incompatible with each other and could be hazardous if mixed, so do not mix chemicals even if they are the same type. All chemicals should be properly labeled and kept in original containers. To protect employees, a facility also should provide personal protective equipment when necessary. Safety data sheets also must be provided on site to make employees aware of the hazards and preventative measures related to chemicals. Manufacturer's instructions should always be referenced for safety precautions. These safety measures are all a critical part of keeping your pool or spa safe and fun for your patrons.